Hallelujah, Christ has conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Shout hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Daddy conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Shout hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, children of God, praise the Lord. You know, hallelujah is a Hebrew language that means praise the Lord. So whenever I say hallelujah, it's a Hebrew language that said praise the Lord. So some people say hallelujah is our heavenly language, it's a Hebrew language, it's a Hebrew language. Hallelujah is a Hebrew language that means praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. Hallelujah, Daddy conquered. Hallelujah, Jesus conquered. It shall not be long. You and your Jesus will go and give testimony. That hard time, that tough situation, that corner the devil kept you, the plan that you must slide, the plan that you will not continue with God, the plan to remove your peace, to remove your joy, the plan to remove your connection with God Almighty. But they never knew that God loves you so, 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 so much. They never knew that God is highly interested in you. They threw you away and feared that they should bury you in the ground. They don't know you are a seed. That the best thing that should be done for you is to bury you on the ground so that you will germinate like a seed before God. Hallelujah. You're a seed of God. So they fed, they can throw you away. They never knew that. Joseph was a miracle looking for what to happen. And Joseph must happen in the land of Egypt. And they said, let's deal with him. They sold him. They never knew they would drive him to his destiny. They never knew the God helped to, for him to achieve his greatness and achieve his destiny. All that is happening to you, all the accusation, all the sorrows, all the insult, all the punishment, all this thing is trying to make you a greater man, trying to make you shine. Don't complain. Don't, don't, don't trouble yourself. Don't fight back. I hear what I'm saying. Don't fight back. God is at work in your life. There will be laughter. There will be day of joy. A day of testimony for you. A day you will testify of the goodness of the Lord. You are going to testify. A day is there for you. A day you are going to testify of the goodness of the Lord. A day you are going to testify of the mercy of God. A day you are going to testify say, Ah, I thought that this was pain. The devil meant it for bad. The enemy meant it for destruction. But God modified it and turned it and make it for your joy. And make it for your elevation. The Bible says all things are working together for good. This will work for your good. This is will work for your good. This accusation will work for your good. This lies against you will work for your good. This abandonment will work for your good. Don't lose hope. Continue in the Lord and you say happy better day. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and happy uh, new week at the same time. Today is the Monday, the second day of the week. I say happy new week. Joy of the Lord is awaiting you. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't allow anything to remove your joy. Continue joining in the Lord. Continue being gladdened in the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is the strength of your life. When you're in tune with God, when you're living a life of purity, a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a clean life. Come on. Don't allow anybody and any situation, anything to tamper with your joy. This morning, I read the write-up by a man of God that went through some operation. You know, he went through operation. They opened him up, removed certain things. So, the man was saying, he sent this uh, while he was in theater to a lot of people thinking, they would say, oh, man of God, sorry. Is that what you passed through? This and this and that. He said as many as he sent them, that many did not even respond. They don't care that he thought they loved him before. I have to send him a message and say, man of God, please, your joy depends on you. Your happiness depends on you. 
When you are waiting for people to make you happy, you will not be happy. Then they will take it away from you. Are you hearing me? When you are waiting for people to make you happy, be happy in the Lord. Make yourself glad. Make yourself happy. Your happiness is in your hand. The moment you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, the moment you are in tune with the peace of God, the moment you are in tune with the glory of God, so will your joy, so will your happiness, so will the gladness of the Lord come your way. And there will be that dancing and rejoicing, and Christ will be glorified. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And mercy hand of the Lord will keep you, protect you, and preserve you in Jesus' mighty name. For the joy of the Lord is a strength. For the joy of the Lord is a strength. Amen. We're talking about consecrate yourself. The time is no more. The time is very short. That is why every day you hear negative thing. Every day you hear one evil or the other. Every day you hear one negative, one stupid thing. You begin to hear what is really happening. This evening, I just went through Facebook. And I saw where a particular lady is having about three or four children. Very tender children. And they came with asking her question, she was doing lady, you know, claiming to be dumb. Somebody by the side was assisting her and talking and talking. Not knowing that they were hired these children, tender children, children of days or weeks. They will hire them, and with the compassion, people will come and be dropping money. They said they made sometimes 10,000 in a day, 15,000 in a day, that there is a particular woman, they are doing this business for. Why? Where is the world going to? What is really happening to us? For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We shouldn't allow anybody to come in between our joy and our God. As you not allow anybody to come in between you and God. Don't allow anything, any power force to come in between you and your joy. It could be your husband using bad ways and laugh it off. Any word you allow to enter inside of you will be the word that will hurt you. Are you hearing me? But when it's said, you bluff it off. This is not my portion. I reject it. It's not mine. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's pray. Dear Lord Almighty, we are here again, your people. My King and my God, you are the God that make it to happen. Your God that have the whole world in your hands. Therefore, Lord, move in the power of your might and majesty and speak to us again. Father, while your word is coming for, let there be healing, let there be deliverance. Let our eyes open, our spiritual eyes of understanding open. Open our thought, our mind, and our understanding. While the word is coming, let it be healing to our body. Let it be liberation and freedom and deliverance right now. And let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Move in the power of your might and majesty. Do it again and take out the glory, Lord. And let thy name alone be praised, exalted, and glorified. And let thy name alone be worshipped and magnified. Flow! in the power of your mind and majesty. Flow in the excellence of your reality. And let thy name alone be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord is there to talk to you right now, beloved of God. You don't know why you came in today because the joy want to do, the Lord wants to do something beautiful for you. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Can you share this message? There are a lot of people now who are hopeless, who are wondering where to hear the raw truth of God, word of God. Can you share this message that is going to get to everybody? Can you share this message that is going to get to them? Let them hear the word of God. While you are sharing, you are equally preaching the word of God to them. God will keep you and bless you. We're talking about consecrating yourself keeping yourself pure, clean and ready for the master, clean and ready for the Messiah to come. While you are doing this consecration work, God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Consecrate yourself part 12 today. In part 12 today, I was telling you why you should consecrate yourself. Reason why you should consecrate yourself, okay? I have told you so that God will know how much you have loved him. That is why. So that the perfect will of God will come to your way because you have consecrated, yes. So that God will walk through you, yes. So that Jesus will be your example. That was what we discussed last week. So that when you consecrate yourself, Jesus will be your word, your example. Hallelujah. And right now, the, the number fifth reason why you should consecrate yourself is that so that his purpose in your life will manifest. That's what we're going to discuss today. The fifth reason why you should consecrate yourself is that his purpose in life will come to pass. Many people, the purpose of God is not coming. Many people are working for other people. Remember when you walk where the, God did not call you, God will not protect you where he did not call you. His grace will not be there. You don't expect to flourish or go higher where God did not call you, where you are not called to be and where you are not what you are not called to do. There's reason that's what, what God created you for. And then you don't know the purpose. So when you consecrate yourself, that means you are not very close to God. That was the time God himself is going to expose to you and reveal to you the purpose of your creation. Many of us don't know why they are here on earth. They are floating up and down. They don't know what to lay their hand upon. 
But I tell you, child of God, that the joy of the Lord is the strength of your life. If today you can consecrate yourself, if today you can come back to God, if today you can say, God, I know I am a sinner. I know I have been going to church. Lord, I don't do it well. How can I be? So many people have wasted a lot of time. There are people, one man of God was telling God, Daddy, for 25 years, I have worked, done your work. I am waiting for you, for you to bless me. God, for you to bless me. And God spoke to him and said, okay, I got it to be. It's me that is waiting for you to change your ways. He said, Lord, I don't understand. Daddy, I don't understand. How do you mean, oh Lord God Almighty, that me that is waiting for you, then now you are telling me that you are the one waiting for me. The Lord said, yes. The Lord told him and said, I called you to be a teacher and a prophet of your generation, but you won't choose to be a pastor and evangelist. You travel far and near preach. You come and pastor the church, and I allowed you. Oh, my goodness. And I allowed you to do that. It is now after 25 years, you are realizing your mistake. Okay, let's go on. May you never make such a mistake, even for one month, even for one year, in the name of Jesus Christ. May automatically the purpose of God manifest in your life. Are you called an evangelist? Go on with the work of evangelist. Are you called as a pastor? Can you go and settle down in pastorate? Are you called as a teacher? Can you make a proof of powerful revelation messages God has given to you that when you talk, your generation will be inspired? Are you called a prophet? What is the mind of God? What is the directive of the word of God? Come on, tell people. Are you called as an evangelist? Are you evangelizing? Our soul being gingered? Our soul being renewed? Our soul being revived? If you are an evangelist and people hear you and they are weak and they stay remain weak, they are not, you are not called evangelist. Well, evangelist is like electrifier. There's no strength. He come and give you strength immediately. The words of evangelists are powerful, sharp, and strong. He plants confidence and purpose in your life and hope in your life at the same time. Are you an apostle, the overall controller? If that's what God has called you to be, come on. Why not manifest who God has called you to be? I've seen a lot of apostles fighting. A lot of apostles quarreling. A lot of apostles doing what they're not supposed to do. I said, these are apostles. So many people have not even started the ministry. They don't know their calling and they pick up the title of an apostle and everywhere and there, they are making mistakes and people are saying, ah, is this what an apostle can do? Is this, why not start with these little titles like us, evangelists? So at least when you do it, they rather a title higher than that one. People say, don't mind him. He's starting up. You've not started. You have carried a very big title on your head. May God help us. You know, consecrate yourself. Part 12. Consecrate yourself. Part 12. We're reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Consecrate yourself. Part 12. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible, the Word of God said, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. You are workmanship of God. Do you know what it means? You are handwork of God. It means that God is the one that made you who you are. He created your eyes the way it is. He created your nose. Know, oh, I have a pointed nose. I have a fine nose. He created it for a purpose. There's reason for that nose. I have a, an open teeth. There's a reason for that open teeth. I have a tip leak. There's a reason for that tip leak. I have a bulgy ear. There's a reason for that bulgy ear. Are you hearing me? I have a round face. There's a reason for that round face. I have a, a, a oblong face. There's a reason for any shape you have, any way you're created, oh, look at my accent, that's reason for you to speak the way you're speaking. Are you hearing me? The Bible said, we are his workmanship. That means, there's nobody that can claim ownership, there's nobody can say, I created him the way he is. Just like some people will say, if not for me, that man would have died. I was the one that fed him when he was in pain, when he was, the, let me tell you, stop bragging about that. Without you, God can still help that man. Without you, God can still help that woman. Without you, that family can still feed again. Are you hearing what? What I'm saying. Stop bragging over what God has used you to do for people. If you're bragging, you're eating your reward. If you're bragging, you're taking the place of God. If you're bragging, you're provoking God. The Bible said, for we are his workmanship. Stop regretting where you were born. Stop regretting the family where you were born. You are born there to make a difference. Are you hearing me? You are born in that family that you're going to create a powerful difference, a mighty different, and outstanding different. And you, God must use you to Turn that family in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, come out of regret and say, now, what am I going to do? And God will direct you and God will tell you what you're going to do so that you do it and God will be glorified. For we are his workmanship, created in, he created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 
which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. The purpose of God coming to manifest. We are created unto every good work. God has ordained from the beginning that we're going to walk in them, that we're going to be who we are. We're going to be peaceful people. We're going to be peacemakers. We're going to be loving people. We're going to be obedient people. We're going to be God-fearing people. We're going to be, you know, lovers of people and lovers of goodness of God, lovers of friends, lovers of good things. Because that is why we are created. Child of God, you don't know what you are created. Can you consecrate yourself? Come closer to God. Separate from sin, from the world, from the friend, from Facebook. Can you separate from WhatsApp? All these things that clunge your time and consume your time. That made you not to have time with God. A lot of us in the Western world, working in the morning, afternoon, night. Some of you are doing two shifts. Some of you are doing three shifts. Oh, when you come back. Oh, you are tired, you, you, you grab food with one hand, you eat while you are eating, you are sleeping off. Or oh, while you are sleeping for two, three hours, you are up again to go for another job. Life has no duplicate. Stop destroying yourself. Life has no duplicate. Better learn how to equip yourself. Are you hearing me? You will not labor forever. And you will not work forever. By the time you are getting to 65, 60, 60, 65, 70, by that time, you become weakened down again. Why not establish yourself? You, yes, you have started with a job. But must you end with a job? Can't you employ people? Can't you be employed of labor? Why not think towards that area? Why not think towards that? Can I be employed all the days of my life? These people that employed me, I don't know who I'm being. These are people that have senses. Uh, do you know what God told me? The Lord told me and said, if you know the purpose why you're created on earth, you will employ people. But when you don't know why you're created, people will employ you. Are you hearing me? People employ you to work for their wisdom, to work for what they're thinking at is so much. They need more hands, more laborers to help them expand it, and you'll be one of them. You can start there, but you may not end there. Oh, for we are his workmanship. When you consecrate yourself, God will say, yes, I created the child for this purpose. When God has seen the attainment of holiness in your life, attainment of righteousness in your life, that you're growing in holiness and righteousness every day, and your light is beaming and your light is so shining, and then heaven will be pleased and say, God will say, yeah, I created him for this purpose. He can even send an angel. The Holy Ghost can whisper to you. You see yourself doing this and this. Ah, you see, I see myself singing, you know, yes, you created a musician, but you don't know about it. That's what the sweet and beautiful voice is giving to you. A um, sweet song might be revealed to you. And God will say, come on. He will send one angel. The angel will come and sing. He say, wow, I saw my I saw angel singing to me. I used to receive new, new, new song every day. What are you then waiting for? Don't you know you are giving the ministry of consolation, ministry of comfort to make people happy? Because a lot of musicians that God has been gifted is not charging people money. When a musician will come, he tell you you're going to pay two million for a night, three million naira for a night. What for men of God? Is it normal freely you have received, freely you give? It's true he will hire the musician. It's true he will hire the organist. It's true he will hire people that will help him. It's true that he has bought the instrument. It's true he will come. But must he be to such amount of money? A lot of people are eating their reward here. Don't be very surprised in eternity. Some people will be called up. They will manage to make heaven. They will be called up and there's no more reward for them. They have taken it here. They have, take, they have been honored here. Every good thing, they have taken it here. By the time they get over there, they will regret and say, Oh, I've eaten all my reward here. Have you started eating your reward here? Can you say, God, I'm sorry. I will no more eat my reward here. I want to eat reward where reward will be. I want to receive reward where reward matters a lot. Where the moment is given to you, it will be forever and ever. Reward can be given to you right now. Sometimes they called me and said, we want to award you. They want to give me one paper. I said, for the work, well done. Which work did I do well? Do you know what I do in secret? Do you know the kind of life I live? What you do, come and become a hypocrite. Do I know even who you are? Then, did God ask you to honor me? If my honor is not of God, forget it. From when men honor you, the same men will destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let it be for the purpose of God. Let it be for the work of God. Let it be to the glory of God. And Christ them shall be honored in Jesus' name. So, God has a purpose of creating you. And that purpose will come to pass. And that purpose will be real. And that purpose will manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that whenever the purpose of God manifests in your life, whenever the purpose of God come to pass in your life. You'll be on the laughing side. 
you will say, oh, what a great God, what a mighty God, what a loving Father that I have. God will become everything good and real to you in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the purpose. So consecrate yourself. God is waiting for you to manifest. There are things that are waiting for you to manifest. Anointing is waiting for you to manifest. Glory of God is waiting for you to manifest. The sick people is waiting for you to manifest. Let this one know the purpose why he's created now so that he will walk towards that area, consecrate himself, separate himself from all the flaws so that he will be anointed to heal, to save and deliver. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. The Bible, the word of God says, Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. The Bible says, for the endless expectation of the creature, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. God is waiting for you. The creature is waiting for you. That man in India is waiting for you. That man in London is waiting for you. The people are waiting for you. Can you manifest child of God? Can you consecrate yourself that oil will be poured on you? Power will be poured on you. Connection will be given to you. Glory will be given to you so that you are going to go out and preach Jesus Christ of Nazareth in power, in mind and dignity. Can you consecrate yourself? Why are you full of complaint? Why are you complaining? A lot of people are complaining since I become born again this and that that complaint is not of the Lord the Bible said it's better to pray than to complain you see that man that would have been complaining in the book of Luke chapter 18 she would have been complaining and complaining she or oh, they took her land when she went to judge judge will say come in the morning she will go in the morning judge will say come in the evening she will go in the evening judge will say come tomorrow morning she continue going why are you complaining child of God have you seen anybody that complain and have victory have you seen anybody that complain and have success have you seen anybody that complain and have upliftment let me tell you insist in the Lord walk in the Lord and the glory of the Lord will keep you in the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, child of God. So what are we trying to say? The Bible said, for the endless manifestation of the children uh, of the creature, wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. Many things are waiting for you. You can only manifest in consecration when you must have spent enough time with the Lord. How many times do you pray again? Many of us don't pray again. We are too busy and then anytime we want to conclude we have our phone, we hold our phone in our hand and we sleep up. No more one hour prayer. Do you remember in those days you pray for one hour, you pray for two, you pray for three hours. Oh, the devil was afraid of you then, and the power of darkness made the meeting and said, Let's weaken her, let's weaken him. And today you cannot even pray. When you get up to pray, you sleep off on your knee. May God deliver you. May the God of heaven assure you favor and mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. So when you consecrate yourself, Things are waiting for your manifestation. When you consecrate yourself, you will really know who God is. You will really know who His glory is. You will really know what the power and merciful hand of the Lord is. Let this God help us. Let this God help you. Let this God help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at what the Bible said in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses. The Bible said, Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the mystery of man is great upon him. The mystery of a man is great upon him. Look at what the Bible said. For because of every purpose there is time and judgment. For every purpose there is time and judgment. There is time for you to work out the purpose of your life so that you'll be judged on the last day. If you don't receive the purpose while you're created, you'll still be judged. If you receive it, God will still judge you in a positive way. There was a man, a drama that they made one day. A man who went back to heaven with a very big cloth, a mighty cloth, the properties, he carried them back to God. And so God, I managed to carry them back to you. God, this was the, uh, you know, you showed me health that can heal a lot of people, but people of the earth didn't value it. I tied it again. You gave me wisdom of how to develop this and how to heal people of this and that. But people of the earth never mind about them. I tied them back. The way you gave me, I brought them back to heaven. The way you gave me, I brought them back to eternity. All that God gave him to satisfy man here, to heal man here, to help man here, to deliver man here, he packaged all of them and sent them back to eternity. He packaged all of them and brought them back to God again. So before you understand it, God waited for him and he spoke. After he has finished speaking, God said, well, 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 you made a great mistake of life. We don't need those things here. It is on air that they are needed. Here we are not sick. 
Here we don't get blind. Here we don't get weak. Everything here in heaven is perfect. It's on air that is full of chaos, full of problem and trouble, full of pains. That's why we gave you those things. And then you deny the people that those things belong to because you saw them that they were not cooperating with you. All the people I'm allowing to have sun and have the rain showers, do they all cooperate with me? Child of God, why not do things for God's sake? Why are you denying that man that right? He's not, I will not give him this. I will not give her that. Why not do that for Christ's sake? Do it for Christ's sake. Can you give him attention again? Can you reconcile with him again? Can you reconcile with her again? Let there be another chance. Do you know when you people have offended and you throw them out of your life and later you realize it and you give them another chance of their life? That is how God will give you another opportunity. Is it not you that say, God, give me another opportunity, give me another chance? My spiritual life is wombled. My spiritual life is so working that my spiritual life is thrown upon. Oh God of heaven and earth, I want to grow anew. You begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And what do you expect? You are expecting that God will hear you. I pray may he hear you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, child of God, this is a high time for you to say, God, what is the purpose? Where is the purpose? The purpose why you created me. There is a purpose, beloved of God. There is a reason why you are created, child of God. There is a reason why God made you who you are. There is a reason why the peace of the Lord. There is a reason why the joy of the Lord is upon your life. Oh, glorious power of God, we rest upon us and upon our children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm. For we give God all the praise and worship. All the dominion, adoration, and thanksgiving is ascribed unto the name of Messiah. Be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Do you know that when you are consecrated, is the time you will hear what God wants you to do. That's the time He will make use of you. Yesterday evening or this early morning, I was almost left off. My man came to one particular woman of God in the United States. I say, oh, to Russia, to them there is a thick afternoon they are enjoying. But to Russia, we're trying to sleep. Do you know, I just chatted her. Do you know what happened? She said, I've been sick. I'm this. I said, wow. Can I pray with you? She called. I prayed. Or I called her on WhatsApp and I prayed for her. Today, she's better. She's healed of the Lord. Can you listen to the divine advice? Can you listen to the divine voice of God? So that you don't do things of your own. So that you don't do things because you want to do them. So that you get it at the point. So that anybody you help, anything you do, people say, Wow, you came just right on time. Hey, I am happy the way it happened. I am happy the way it happened. May the Lord God Almighty be your strength and be your help in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Unto the Lord be all the glory. Mm. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. Let's read verse 23 and verse 24. Yes. Or we can read verse 20. Let's read verse. Uh, let's read verse 24 and verse 25. Even if we don't mind. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay, let's start reading from 23. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse number 23. 23, 24, 25. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 23. I will also make it position for the beaters and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the basin of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. Look at verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. You have a purpose. God made you his own purpose. So if what God purposed to come to pass, you have every opportunity to succeed. When God created you, he created you an engineer. He created me as a preacher. He created you as a businesswoman. He created you as a lawyer. He created you as a teacher. He created one as other thing or other. Why are you interfering in another person's purpose? What are you doing for God and what do you want to do for God? I have to also that it shall come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall you come. Look at verse 25. That I will break the Syrian in my land and upon the mountain treading them under feet. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. And their burden depart from off their shoulder. There is a burden you are carrying. That's a load you have been carrying. The Lord said, he proposed that you fly. He proposed that those burdens fly off you. Let them get up. I don't know the constant bad news I've been receiving about yourself, about your family, about your lineage. I break the ba barrier right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people that will come to you, continue praying and praying and praying. Oh, before I understand it, they'll go out and do one thing or the other. You don't know that's the purpose why they are created. Are you hearing me? 
They have created and devil to want their destiny, but along the line, you can say, No, devil, you did not create me. I will not serve you. There's a family we prayed for. They've been looking for the fruit of the womb. Thank God, last day, the Lord had all. The Lord answered all. And uh, the woman took in, and this year she delivered. You know, after the delivery, the day they want to bring the baby to my office, he said, the hair is coiled. If you put a uh, uh, comb, the child will be crying. I said, what are you trying to insinuate? Are you trying to tell me he's dada or what? He said, no, daddy, that's not. I should shut up in Jesus' name. He cannot be dada. He's not dada. I cannot be dada in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I caused the spirit of so-called dada. I said, this child is not. I cannot be. Don't dedicate the child God I've given to you to the devil. Don't dedicate the child God I've given to you to the devil. By still allowing your mother, go and do reconnection, your old father in the village, go and do reconnection, go and do this and that. I am an, from so, so, so tribe. We believe in this thing. Tribe, my feet. Are you hearing me? No tribe is higher than the lion of tribe of Judah. And that's what God wants you to follow. Follow the standard of God and not the standard of your villagers. Where are the people in your village? Have anybody gone to heaven from your village before? How much more controlling God and telling God what he should do and what he likes and what he doesn't like? Oh, God said in verse 24, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. His thought and his purpose, they are working out. His thought and his purpose, they are standing out. Let the glorious Son of God help you and help me so that we'll know God more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. So that we're going to consecrate and be who God wants us to be and dedicate our spirit, soul, and body so that we're not going to foil along the way. We're going to be strong like David, like Daniel. Daniel took a decision and Daniel stand by the word of God and Daniel stand by the authorities in the word of God and it worked for Daniel. In the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Look at what Daniel did. A purpose, purpose, purpose. That is the reason why you are curated. Oh, come on. Can you say, God, drive me towards my purpose? I think, who was the, is it uh, somebody, Rika, that uh, wrote that book that say purpose-driven life. There's a purpose that will drive your life. There's a purpose that will motivate your life. There's a purpose why you are created. Can you say, oh God, daddy, why am I created? Open the eyes of my understanding. Do you know that this life will always come with manual? Life will always, properties, created the vehicles and whatever. They came with powerful manual from the producer. And God has given you the manual, the Bible, the word of God. Are you hearing me? God has given you the Bible, the word of God. Meditate on it. Meditate this part today. The following day you meditate the other part. Continue growing in the spiritual realm. After doing this, you become strengthened. And you have a lot of branches spiritually. And that's why when forces and influences push you, 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 you can only shake but not fall in. Let the mighty hand of grace rest upon you. And let the mighty hand of grace rest upon me. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel was 8, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Daniel said, no, is this rotten food? Is it what I'm going to use to defile myself? No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And what happened? That Daniel stopped. Yet he won. Hmm. Uh, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat or with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might give, he might not defile himself. Mm, that he might not defile himself. The best thing he can do for God for a generation, is don't defile yourself. Are you hearing me? Don't defile yourself. When defilement comes, tell him, no, I will not continue in you. I reject you. We'll be trying to be making our message. Sometimes some of our messages will be for 30 minutes. Sometimes it will be for just that something minute. We are trying to minimize it so that it will not even be up to an hour again. Are you hearing me? Okay? So that is it. That's the word of God. So, this is the reason why you should not, for any reason. Daniel proposed in his heart. You have a purpose. You are created for a reason. Daniel proposed in his heart. I am not going to do this. I am not going to do that. I am not going to do this. I am not going to do that. And Daniel never did them. As Daniel was strong in the Lord, as his glorious hand kept him, may God's mighty hand keep you, keep you by the power of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the mighty purpose of God, the glorious hand of God, 
the mighty power of Jehovah, see you thoroughly through in the name of Jesus Christ. May God stand by your side. May you know the purpose why you are created. When you know your purpose, you will be blessed out of it. You become rich. You're going to be a, a help to your generation. You're going to be a help to a lot of people. God, you know why you're called. You know where God wants you to be. You know where he wants you to stay. May the glory of the Lord be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And then we shall live and see glorious day. We shall live and see happy better days in Jesus' name. Look at what the Bible says. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Second Timothy, okay, chapter 1 verse 9. Who had called us, who, 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 who saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and grace. Which was given in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is the way of planning of God. This is the way of planning of God. You see? Before the world began, God knew that man you marry, you marry him. God knew that child you have now that I feel so stubborn, you have that type of child. But as a testimony awaiting. Let me tell you. For the father you have seen life and entered into life. Don't regret everything. You regret the way you are married. You regret your father family. You regret. Come on, stop regretting and begin to look for a purpose. God created you for a particular purpose. Stop folding your hand. Opportunity doesn't come for people that fold their hand. Opportunity comes for the people that are looking for, for forward for something. Look for God and God will manifest. Look for God. God will give you divine idea. You know, we children of God have been ridiculed by a lot of people that never believe in Christ. They so much ridiculed on. They say we fold our hand and begin to use the little money we have. So see this. So this. Believe in God for this. Believe in God for this. Believe in God for that. And because we don't have enough faith, a mighty faith, and things like that. Then, as a result of that, what are we trying to say? Child of God, this is a time for you to say, Oh God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and grace. God, what is the purpose and grace of my life? Purpose is there. When you discover your purpose, grace will be given to you. Are you hearing me? So, through consecration, through coming closer to God, through dedicating yourself to God, your purpose of creation will come. And when the purpose of your creation will come, grace of God will be there. You will be doing it freely. You will be doing it easily. You will be doing it movingly. People will say, ah, people will think it is easy. But the way you are doing it, very far, very obediently, very happy doing it. Let me tell you, you can only be happy in the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life will be telling you this one I want, this one I want, this one I want. A lot of people have been medical doctors. That's why I know that treat the mad people. But because of love of money and whatever, he joined politics. And then the career is dead. What is going to tell God on the last day in eternity? Can you maximize and make good, good use of the divine spiritual potential that is given to you by God and do the work of God for God? This holiness must be holy. Children of God, it's a time to rise. It's a time to do it again. It's a time to talk to ourselves and say, This God is forever God. There is a purpose why you are created. There is a purpose why you are created, child of God. There is a reason why you are created. There is a reason why I am created. Without Christ, I can't discover my purpose. Without Christ, you cannot discover your purpose. Oh, hallelujah. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. Epistle of John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. That's the epistle. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whatsoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. The children of God are manifesting. The children of devil is manifesting. That's why evil is on the increase. And instead of children of God to manifest with positive things, they're folding their hand. They want to go and be a slave to the people of the world. No, God has redeemed you. You cannot go back to the world. You cannot go back to that devil. You cannot go back to that sin. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Be redeemed clean. Be redeemed pure. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let the name of Christ be glorified for unto the Lord be other glory. We worship Emmanuel, we adore. Hey, mama, mama, mama. Unto the Lord be other glory. Hallelujah. Christ has conquered Satan. Come closer, draw nearer. And you will see. It's only when you come nearer, his grace will be poured upon you. Your purpose shall be discovered and grace will carry you on. 
But when you don't know what you're creating, why are you in the ministry? I don't know. God is calling me. What's he calling you to do? And these people that said God called them, they don't know why they're called. There are people that go and use fake and stupid powers. There are people that go and begin to introduce other fake things into Christianity. But that's not why you're called. Beloved, that's not why you're called. The purpose of God calling you shall come to pass. I decree right now, the purpose of God calling you shall be superior and more superior than every other thing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Most High God. May the peace of the Lord rule. May the joy of the Holy Spirit stand for you. You are created for a purpose. And that purpose will come to pass. Come closer to God right now. Dedicate yourself. Rededicate yourself. Consecrate yourself. I set yourself apart and say, God, I want to go to heaven. I need consecration. I want all my sin forgiven. Even those ones that are stored waiting for me in eternity, I don't want to bear them anymore. But Lord, I want to be a seed of God and a seed of righteousness. And you will see God in action. Having had this word. Remember, we're talking about consecrate yourself. And we're talking about purpose. Or we'll talk about purpose of consecrating yourself. What will happen when you consecrate yourself? The advantage, the great gain of, of, of death. Oh, may God. That's the purpose of consecration. Why you should spend your time, stay alone, do some funny things, to obey and to walk to the end. May Christ be glorified. Who careth and loveth us. And may his name alone be uplifted, adored forever in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Having heard this word now, do you want to continue in the sight of God? Do you want to continue with holiness and righteousness? If that is that what you want to do, can you come to Jesus now? Can you turn to Jesus now? Can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm, a, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me every sin and unrighteousness. Give me grace to be your child. Now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord be the strength of your life. And may Jesus' glory cover you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Bible said, for my glory will I show you. Joy. Jesus will show us his glory. His manifold glory of power and honor. Christ is wonderful. Excellent and gracious. His name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Having heard this word, can you say, God, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. If that is what you, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If that is what you're planning, can you say, Lord Jesus? I'm sorry I'm a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. Give me grace to be your child. Now and forevermore. Amen. May the mighty hand of God be upon you. Keep you. All that are listening from any part of the world. I bless you, I favor you. May you see glorious good day in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven and the mercy of God is upon your life. In the name of Jesus, be blessed and be favored. For joy of the Lord is your strength. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. I pray for you, beloved of God, that is already a child of God. May you walk towards the glory of God. May you walk towards serving God. Anything that is distracting you, the fashion of this world, the dressing of this world, the new dressing, the chain, the ring, the bangle, the car, the house, the children, all these things that are distracting you from coming to God. Let them be cleared of an either. You that are looking for the fruit of the womb, receive your children now. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the mighty hand of God, the mighty hand of grace rest upon you. And Christ is glorified forever. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for the hearing of our prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Peace of God upon you and glory of God upon you. You're going to have an excellent Tuesday, a beautiful Wednesday, a holy Thursday, a, a, a uplifting Friday, connecting Saturday in the mighty name of Jesus. You see goodness of the Lord along your life. Upon your head this week and you see glory of God. Thank you, Daddy, for hearing us. For in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you and keep you until I come your way again. God keep you and bless you. Amen.